Welcome to our service for Sunday the 30th of August, the 12th Sunday after Trinity. If you have a copy of the order of service, please do follow it. If you haven't, please don't worry, just enjoy the service as it is. Just a short pause before we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we pray together the prayer of preparation, saying, Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires known, known and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the comment, the special prayer for this day, the twelfth Sunday after the Trinity. Let us pray. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Poor Simon Peter. In the space of a couple of verses, he goes from hero to zero, even less than zero. Last week, Peter got it spectacularly right. When asked by Jesus, who do you say I am? He replied forcefully, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This week he gets it spectacularly wrong. It's a key moment in the Gospel story. Jesus makes the first of his three predictions of his arrest, death and resurrection. And the narrative turns towards his journey to Jerusalem. Immediately, immediately Peter jumps in and says, God forbid, Lord, this must never happen to you. The Messiah is God's agent on earth. He will never lose. He will never fail. He will win and be triumphant thinks Peter and all the other disciples. To be fair to them, they have tradition and expectation on their side. Nothing that any of them have heard has prepared them for the notion of the Messiah dying, a shameful and painful death. Jesus turns on Peter with an uncharacteristic and shocking savagery. Having just renamed him the rock on whom he will build his church, he is now a stumbling block, sharp stone in the road. Worse, he is now Satan, the adversary, the accuser. And we're back in the wilderness with Jesus tempted by the worldly power offered by the devil. Jesus' harsh response to Peter suggests that he was, he was tempted by the great power Satan offered him. We can often overlook that Jesus was fully human and subject to the same temptations we are, and greater ones too. Following his Father's will was a daily choice for him, not something that came easily or automatically. 
Jesus radically redefines the Messiah's role. No longer the great warrior king, but a pilgrim leader who suffers with and for God's people. Over the next 12 chapters of Matthew, the disciples gradually and often painfully learn the truth about Jesus' destiny and their own part in it, climaxing in his death and resurrection and his commissioning of them to go out and preach his good news to the world. Jesus' talk of taking up your cross would have shocked them greatly. Taking up your cross is such a familiar phrase to many of us now that it often loses its power to unsettle and unnerve. There's no direct mention of Jesus' own cross, yet it stands like a shadow behind this saying. To deny yourself sounds very negative, but this isn't a call for self-hatred or a masochistic desire to suffer. That's just a self-centred and self-serving form of martyrdom, really. Nor does self-denial mean subordinating yourself to others, especially to church leaders or other religious or civic authorities. No, it means clearly to put God first, to direct our wills, our desires and our actions, to work for God's kingdom of peace, and to seek his will as shown in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. We can see the other kingdom, the kingdom of Satan, at work in the world every day, the kingdom of power and of force in Belarus and Hong Kong and elsewhere. It means for us, in following this kingdom and taking up our cross, to mean to say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and really mean it, and then live it out to the full, whatever the cost or risk. It means to give all and risk all for Jesus' sake. For Jesus himself lived out the charge he gave to his disciples and to us. So let us ask God for the strength of faith to follow where Jesus still leads. Jesus never said that following him would be easy, the way of the kingdom would be easy, but he as ever leads us in that way. Amen. To the petition, gracious Lord, the response is, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for our church in these troubled times and that we can find meaningful ways to worship you. We pray for the vulnerable who are unable to join us in church for Sunday services and that they feel loved and included in our worship. Gracious Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Lord, we know that all our lives matter to you, regardless of colour or creed. We pray for those in authority to respect the rights of their people and treat everyone equally. Gracious Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for those affected by natural disaster, the residents of the US Gulf Coast suffering from the effects of Hurricane Laura those in California who have lost their homes by wildfires, and people in India suffering from heavy monsoon rain. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for our children returning to school this coming week, particularly those starting school, students moving up to secondary school, or starting further education. We pray for their teachers and all those working in schools and for parents who are anxious. Gracious Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for those in a dark place, those who are depressed by everyday lives or worried by the pandemic, for those who have lost their jobs and struggling to make ends meet. For the sick and those nearing the end of their lives. In a moment of silence, we pray for those we know in need of your healing love and comfort. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for those who have died in faith, especially Alan Wenborn, Vaughan Suckermore, and Tony Mason, and those who mourn their passing. We pray also for Prue Yockney, 
whose year's mind occurs at this time. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for ourselves. Keep us true to our faith. Unite us in our love of you and be persistent in our prayers. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Come now to our prayers of confession. Let us come before God, knowing our faults and frailties, but knowing that God loves us and seeks to forgive us and put us back on his path. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, so often we are slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, so often we fail to be known as your disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of truth, so often we fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come now to the final part of our service, the spiritual communion. Let us begin by praying together the prayer for the act of spiritual reception. We say together, O loving God, in union with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word, and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear Son, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptised and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. Lord Jesus, as the hem of your garment, touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body, so may the souls of your servants be healed. For though we cannot receive you in the sacrament, we can, through this offering of our prayers, receive you in our hearts. Grant this for your sake. Amen. Amen. And we pray together, saying, Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And the blessing, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Abide in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.